episode 11, part 1, take 1. Edited. You're a lovely mover. You want to have a go, you son? Get some of that fat off you. Hey, Will, stick 15A on the box for me. Come on, Ben. No, Frank, let's go on and I'll make you a Frank Ferti butter. OK, well, just let's have a cup of tea first. I'd rather stop out in the lorry. Well, I won't argue with you. yourself if you want. Three all together. Thanks. I think I can manage this one by myself. I'll be in there. Hey, how do I know I'm wanted? Oh, you are. Hey, where's the waking? That was quick. I thought you'd be half an hour jabbing. Yeah, well, I'm a man of few words, aren't I? Do you know, this tune reminds me of something, but I can't place it. Try Buddy Holly. You're right. Naturally. I remember the day he got killed, you know. My first day, my first job at work. And this girl came in, her face all blotched up with crying. He wasn't like any of the others, Little Richard or any of that lot. He was sort of refined, you know, with his own rim glasses and everything. So that's how you like your fellas. You know what I mean. You fool. Do you... Uh... Mind if I join you? No, oh, go ahead, sit down. John? You think he was a gentleman? I didn't interrupt you, did I? I was invited, as a matter of fact. Uh, no, Beth was just saying about Buddy Holly, how he got killed. Hey, remember Otis Redding in that plane crash? The greatest. Yeah, I can't turn you loose. Buddy Ollie was in a plane crash. Oh, I wouldn't know before my time. Will you stop in over then, Frank? No, not tonight, kid. Oh, but me mum was expecting you to. Well, I can't, you see. I've got a date with a Frankfurter. Oh. Would you, uh... Like a record on love. We've got lots of oldies. Prehistoric, mostly. No, thanks. I'd like some more milk in this tea, though. It's a bit strong. Love. Well, what are you grinning at? You could always scratch your eyes out, you know. Now, listen, you can stop here if you want to, because you're obviously used to stopping over. It's a bed and breakfast, and it's dead cheap. Ah, oh, yeah, I bet that's not the only thing. Careful. Oh, come on, Frank, let's go. <laughs> OK, I'll be quiet. We'll do a minute again. <laughs> that going spurl off? Oh, boot. Milky, isn't it? Well, it's not 
cutting you out, is it? I mean, it's not you, it's me. If all noble needs goes crying to the Sally Army. Now, listen, you, I laid out five quid for that telly. Well, you can always flog it back. Oh, for five quid? Well, I didn't know he'd throw it back in my face. Oh, you went into this with your eyes closed. They're right, little Miss Goody Two Shoes. Great, I told you this would happen. Now, listen, you broke his radio. Don't blame I'm me. I'm a Christian soldier. Now, stop laughing at me. Children. Children. Do you know what time it is? Yes, Mum. It's nearly your bedtime. How very considerate of you, Billy. There's pieces of wire all over the living room. They won't clear themselves, you know. Oh, I can wait till the morning, Auntie Do you know what I have to do in the morning? The drayman's coming at eight o'clock and then... I'll help you. You? Oh, really? You're far too busy helping other people. Ah, uh, yeah, well, she may not be doing that for much longer. I'm not giving up, you know. No, but you might get the push, you know. I won't. Look, must you argue? Arguments, arguments all day. It's worse than the bar. Oh, I'm sorry, Auntie Annie. I'm off to bed. Oh. I will help you in the morning, though, honest. Good night, little soldier. Oh. oh. Poor kid. You know, I think she's bitten off more than she can chew. Have I, Billy? Have I? That's what I wonder. Sit down, Mum. Come on. Come and sit down and let's let you sort it out. I'm so tired, love. I'm so tired I could scream. Well, about this housekeeping business, why don't you get somebody in to help you? Now that Mrs Ogden's working in the shop. Look, that's the whole point, love. Now, she'll only be there for a short time. If I get anyone else in and then she comes back, the rumpus. I've had it once before, Billy, I know. Simply not worth it to me. All right, well, why don't you just let things slide for a bit? Oh, I don't mean the pub. I mean, come on, a bit of wire in the city. Your father, if he Would have cleared up behind him, yeah, I know. Not that I'm ungrateful, Billy. I mean, I know that lamp did need a longer flex. I don't live up to him, do I? No, no, I know you want me to, but I just don't. Look, love, you've been very good to me. You and Lucille, you're all I've got here. You and the pub. You know, this was my first day. My first day with my name up there. It had to go well for me, love. It had to. And it did, though, didn't it? I mean, it's a fine house you keep here, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> I didn't tell you, love. Two Irishmen came in and started quarrelling. My heart was in my boots. Oh, you thought they'd start throwing bombs, did you? An old man. It would have been a bad omen. You know what happened? One of them had lost his shoe, apparently. The other started to help him find it. And they went out, the best of friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole world, isn't it? It's a whole side world in here for you, this pub. You know, however much the work is good for you, it stops you thinking about things. I miss him, Billy. You know, what I said just now about not living up to him, I didn't mean that exactly. I suppose what I mean is that, uh, I just can't take his place. I mean, there's me and I'm this big and there's the space that he's left and it's like that and there's bound to be a gap and Sometimes, Mum, sometimes I, I think that you want me to fill it, and I can't. I just... I just can't. You know, there's no two ways about it. He was one hell of a bloke. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say that, love. I'm glad to know you think like that. Oh, of course. Well, I mean, you know... Oh, of course I do. Well, Billy, we saw so little of you. I was afraid that be, because we stayed here, because we hadn't moved out to Cheshire like we said we would, well, you looked down on us and that you were ashamed to bring your friends and that that was why you didn't come home. No, 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 the boot's on the other foot. Half the time, my life in London, the sort of friends I had, the sort of life that... I'd have been ashamed in front of him. I couldn't hide anything from him. He could see right through me. Perhaps I would have come back if I'd had something decent to report. Anyway, all that's changed now. The garage. Oh, Billy Lovey'd be so proud of you. Would he? I wonder.
Well, I pass. <laughs> Taste it first. What for? Well, you never know. Can't be too careful in this life. I've told you it's me cooking that's sheer poison. I'll remember that. Hey, I've just had a thought. Why aren't we eating hot dogs? Because I fancied fish and chips. No, but I didn't. Ah, that's why you didn't have none. No, but hot dogs was my idea and I forgot. Well, that's me secret. To drive all other thoughts out of your head. All other thoughts but what? You tell me. You know, I'd take to you, the old fella. Think you were all right. You know, I might be the amazing Bet Lynch and all that, and I'm not doing right bad as a geisha girl, but what I can't do is hear through walls. I was paying you a compliment. Tell me more. I said you'd go down with the old fella. What I'm more concerned about is going down with you. That's because you're ignorant. Why? Did you want to take me home and show me off? I don't know where he is. He's a seaman. Shifts around a lot. I suppose I could trace him if I wanted. I mean, if I was in trouble and spread the word, yeah, he'd come. What makes him so important to you? The old fella. Well, nobody can put one over on him. I mean, he knows how to carry on. I once saw him do a bloke in. Oh, near enough. Had 20 stitches in his head. Fella came at him with a bottle. Should have seen the blood. Who had the stitches? Well, it wasn't me old fella, that's for certain. Told you he knows how to carry on. <laughs> like with the old girl. She wouldn't have dared have riled him. No monkey business there, all right. Do you mean she was frightened of him? Yeah. Well, I don't see what's so good about that. I mean, if I was married to a bloke, that's not the way I'd want to feel. I bet he made a life a right misery. Don't talk about what you don't know. Well, you've just told me. I've told you nothing. Yes, you have, and it strikes me you're better off with him gone. I told you he's not gone. I only have to spread the word. Was your mother? Dead. Frank, if she'd, if she'd have been alive, and with your dad and all that, would you take me round to see him? Would you? Why not? Can I have a sip? You should have had summer to eat. Yeah, well, I'm not like you. If I ate what you ate, I'd blow up like a balloon. You wouldn't fancy me wearing corsets, would you? <laughs> Kinky for him. But are they anyway? Yeah, well, it's all right for you. You trying to say I'm skinny? I'm not complaining. I've got a 29-inch waist. So what? Mine's 24. Well, I can't tell from here. Do you mean you want me to come across? Well, I know it's a long journey. But you should be all right if you wrap up warm. Feels more than 24 to me. Oh, I've left that fire on, honest, the electric bill this month. Romantic, aren't you? Hark, who's talking? Me? Oh, I'm dead romantic. Darling, did you like it up on the moors with all that leather and lollipop? Yeah. Oh, it was, though, wasn't it? Ah, if you like that kind of thing. It's cos you're so high up. I saw the sky once and I thought it was the sea. It looked just like the sea. Jump and Joseph, blind as well. Sure hope. Well, if I can't talk to you... <laughs> Thirty seconds. Coronation Street production number P six nine four, episode eleven, take one, part two. Edited. Please.
pleased with the telly, Mrs Sharples. Why? His likes and dislikes are not the same as yours. The first rule to help anybody is to put yourself in their shoes. If that old man was happy with his wireless, then it's asking you to cart it off. It's your job to find out what he wants. He wants his wireless back, and if he doesn't get it back, he's going to report me to the Salvation Army. And it's because it's broken, he can't get it back, and you don't want him to complain. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I think I don't... Then I think I'll give the whole thing up. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs Sharples. I don't know what's got into me this morning. I must have nodded off. Have you got it? Got what? Well, not the sleepy sickness. That shilling piece you went to fetch. Oh, no, no, I couldn't find it. Mind you, the way things are at present, if everything was to disappear, I wouldn't be surprised. No, and the way you're running your caboodle, neither would I. Hey, Mrs Sharples. Yes? <laughs> Mr Noblet, he's uh, not by any chance a friend of yours from the over 60s, is he? I never met him in my life, and from what you tell me, I haven't missed much. No. Oh, I wonder what's good for eyelids. It's a working great list. Shall I sing it out no, to you? No, no, Chuck, just leave it with me. My stand will deliver the goods. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. My stand will come in person. He's one of the services I'm laying on. Hey, up! Oh, that sounds a bit naughty. I beg your pardon? Well, you know. Oh, never mind. You meant some up dirty, didn't you? Not content with desiccating these premises with filthy goings on. Morning, Lucy. Don't oh. waltz off. I want a word with you. You better go, kid, or she'll clean you up as well. See ya. Well, so you know what I'm talking about, then. Are you all right, Mrs Ogden? Here you do look tired, love. Not half as tired as what you must be. Uh, would you like to spell that out? You know, elaborate a bit. In the early hours of this morning, there was a lorry parked outside this shop. It's not no parking, is it? Parked there dead brazen for all the world to see. Only them as couldn't sleep. Have you always suffered from insomnia? Don't you cheek me, you cheeky young Uzzy. I've got my daughter to consider. I've got the reputation of this shop to consider. And I know for a fact how the word gets round. Before you know it, they'll be coming with postcards and not for selling China dogs. Now, if I get you right, what I do is my own business as long as I keep it to myself. Well, right. I agree with you. I mean, it could be tricky because you're in charge. But don't worry. I'll tell him. Next time, he can park it round the back. The lorry. Well, if you're not from welfare, where are you from? I'm a private citizen, same as you are. Widowed and a pensioner to boot. Now, do you want this radio set or don't you? No, all right, haven't you? Better come in, then. And you wipe your feet. Because on the sideboard. Ah, I can see a bit of dust. Didn't Lucy do it clean round here? Ah, not her job to make it clean. I got this woman, you see. <laughs> That's demarcation, that is. Recognised in industry. So you made it difficult for her? Are you her grandma? No. Well, I feel like it on occasion. No, the name's Sharples and that radio set was mine. Guaranteed to pick up interference and make all manner of din. Well, what do you want to give it to me for, then? Because I've a mind to. <laughs> Stop me telling tales to the Sally Army. Would you? Well, I've a right to. Sending me a chit of a girl like that. That chit of a girl has got a lot to her. Given a bit of experience, she can do other folks a lot of good. Oh, she didn't do me any good, did she? She didn't even cut me toenails. Did you ask her? Well, she should have known. If she'd just cut me toenails, I might have been able to go out for a bit. She was new to it, and you did all you could to put her off. She started with plenty of spirit, and now it's all but gone. Well, I don't like folk coming to cut me toenails. Waiting on do-gooders to come and give me a bite to eat. Well, it might sound harsh, but you've got no choice. Well, I don't like it. Well, you don't need to take it out on them. <laughs> They're used to it. That girl wasn't. Do you want her to be discouraged? <laughs> She's a nice little figure. Oh, so it's not all black marks. <laughs> and if you see her, you can tell her just that. I'm not getting at you, Frank. It's just that I don't have to like Westerns. I mean, fair enough, you do. Yeah. I mean, you go on all that continental stuff. You can't even get what they're talking about. Well, they do happen to have subtitles. That's all right if you can read. Yeah, but you wouldn't even go and see one, would you? Right, I wouldn't. Ah, give me a good book anyway. The Torts of Mount. Oh, don't you start. You're missing a great man. All right, well, it's my loss then. Hello. You taking bet? No. It's a place for everything. So you're wagging outside the last night? Yeah, so did Emma's ma. And she could make things very difficult. Don't make me laugh. For bet. Come off it. Look, I've been out here longer than you, Spar. I think I know the way things work. Yeah, you got bogged down, didn't you, Ray? You're as happy as a sandboy. A sandboy making mud pies. Never could keep a collar clean, Mrs Sharples. 
Hello, Mrs. Sharp. I've just f fixed things with your old fella. You haven't. I wouldn't go back if I were you. You might expose him to temptation. Oh, you mean he might clout, huh? No. He compliments her on her figure. Well, I suppose that's an achievement. Ha <laughs> ha, goodbye, Sally Army. I didn't say that. No, and neither did I. I think I'll go and see Major Parrot again, see if he's got anything for me to do. She'll do all right as a do-gooder when she's been through the mill a bit. I feel I already have. We all just think that, every day and every stage we reach. But the sad truth of the matter is, there's always somewhat more to follow. Don't knock, will you? Repairing the damage. Hey, you've got to clean up. What's got into you, then? Been to the movies. How many did you mow down on the way here? You are. Uh, I bet you had a go at all the scuffers right between the eyes. Yeah, and a little old lady with a poot. How did you know? I knew a fella once, you know, and every time he went to see a flick, he used to come out thinking he was somebody else. Like with Norman Wisdom, you know, he used to come out walking bandy-legged. <laughs> Your fella, was he? Yeah, for a bit. You must have known him well. I thought I did. I was only 16. You don't know much at that age. You trying to put me down? What about? Making cracks about me age. No. No, I wasn't funnily enough. Does it worry you being young with me? Don't worry about nothing. Seriously? No. I worry about it. I worry about it with you. That's cos you're ignorant. Well, look at what you just said about repairing the damage. Oh, come on. Don't be soft. That's just a turn of a phrase. I'd say that to any chick. You wouldn't say it to that Judy bird. I mean, you wouldn't have to say it to her. She slaps gunge on her face. You don't have to pretend not to understand, Frank. I'm telling you. Straight up, she slaps it on. What I mean is she's 16. She's 16 if she's a day. Right, I agree with you. She's underage. Underage for what? Well, 16 is the age, isn't it? For having sex. I thought that's what you meant. Right, there's your answer. I'd be a right burke. That is what you're on about. No. Look, what I mean is, she's young. And when I saw you together, well, you seemed to fit more than you and me. Let me be the judge of that. So you mean? I mean, it's half past seven on a Friday night. There's other places I could be, you know. But what are you doing here? Brain damage. Seriously? Yes, yeah, seriously. I don't know. That's not much of a try. All right. All right, there's me, there's Frank. I say to you, I could be anywhere. I'm such a popular guy. Well, maybe that's a lot of rubbish. Maybe it's not true. Well. You mean these other people where you could be? They don't want you there? How do I know? But with me, you know. You know I want you. Yeah. So you want me? I told you that already. Them very words. Yes, but that was different. Oh, stop faffing, will you? Anyway, you're meant to be dead. I don't die easy. I know that, kid. That's why I like you. They say chicks is tough, boys. So you don't die so easy. I don't half love you, Frank. I don't half love you. Only half? What's that supposed to mean? And I worth the old bit then? You're worth everything. You're dead worthless, but you're worth everything. You know, you don't want to say things like that. Why? You don't, that's all. Hey, how about some music? How about a bit of soul? Are you living at that shop? No. Right, then you're not being inconvenienced. No, but I'm incorporated. If by that you mean concern, so am I in a way, but for different reasons. Well, my reasons are for my position. Yes, the mine has to do with people, not position. People who have come a cropper. My trade stands to be damaged. So does that girl. Bat Lynch! Oh, she's been damaged once too often, if you ask me. That only makes it worse. <laughs>